Podcast. We are now live. All right. Welcome to Secret Society of Gamers Podcast. We're going to start with Wade. Introduce yourself, please. Hey, my name is Wade Jewell. I'm uh, admin of the SSG Facebook group. Hello. Hey, what's up, Wade? Okay, Dre, introduce yourself. Dragon Scorpion. My bad. Yeah, I'm, uh, hi there. I'm Dragon Scorpion. I'm a good gamer as well. Uh, Welcome to the SSG Gaming Podcast. <laughs> All right, this is your boy, Mr. Zodiac. Been gaming for 34 years, and um, I love gaming as a whole. also love games on PlayStation. So, all right, boys, let's get this show on the road. Um, first topic I want to talk about is um, Nintendo NX. All right. Well, wow. Uh, all I can say is any news that I'm hearing about the NX, none of it's good news. None of it's good rumors. The only thing that I hear about the NX is bad rumors, and that has me worried because I love Nintendo as a whole, as a company. You know, I think most of us here have grown up with them, or you know, over our twenties at least, like into our late twenties. You know, I'm going to be I'm 28 personally myself, but. Uh, Nintendo is just, there's not, nothing good news coming out of their camp. It's all bad news, all negative news. And, yeah. uh, you know, I, I don't know what to say. All I can say is I, 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 none of us have concrete, solid info on what it's go, exactly what it's going to be. But from all the rumors, it seems like it's going to be a diskless system based off of SD cards or, or something. And it's uh, not looking good, to be honest. And yeah, the yeah. weaker than the PS4. Yeah, well, I had to go back to the didn't I? Okay, so, what was that? Um, as the last of the previous generations where you come up with a, another, yet another console that's a generation behind? Yeah. It's kind of like the Wii. When the Wii came out, there was the original, there was the previous generation that was the Xbox, the... Uh, you know, Game GameCube or PS2, and then they had you know the Wii, which was barely on par with the original Xbox. Yeah. Last generation hardware. That's. Yeah, I have a feeling we're getting something like that again. So it, it might be you know, maybe barely on par with the PS4, and then PS5 or uh, Xbox 2.0 is going to come out and smash it to pieces. Well, I heard Nintendo going back to cartridge-based uh, gaming. You know, we heard somewhere. Yeah, I heard that too. I heard that too with the um, NX because um, they are um, talking about that they didn't see any discless drive in the new Nintendo system, and they were talking about that they were thinking about going back to the cartridge space. Mm. Uh, that's a bad career move, anyway. Yeah, I think that, and all to be quite honest, because it's going to get the industry doesn't need to go backwards; it needs to go forwards. And I think yeah. Nintendo are making a mistake by going backwards. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I think this is why Nintendo are making so many mistakes, and they're falling behind in the market because you know what I mean. You can see that in the market with their yeah. um, 
because it was the, the market charts. I don't know if the company's like worth like two point two point five billion or, two, or million, but like the sale chart is like two point one. You know what I mean? And it's below the what the company's worth. So yeah. they're obviously making a mistake somewhere, and they need to push themselves a lot higher so they can start getting better. You know what I mean? Because at the moment they are going to be going. They're going to be going out the industry sooner or later. Yep, a, a, a next generation Sega, Sega mm. two point oh. Mm-hmm. And uh, well, actually, you know, you know what you were saying, Nintendo hasn't always had the weaker console. Actually, during the GameCube, it was more powerful hardware wise than the PS two. Its problem: it didn't have a hard drive. It still had memory cards, and there were those stupid discs, those two little one point two gigabyte discs, mini mm-hmm. discs, trying to combat piracy. Other mistakes like that led to GameCube's failure. Power-wise, it was fine. It could scale games and whatnot just fine like the PS2 could. A lot of other things held it back. And Nintendo yeah. thought, oh, well, we tried. We tried to go hardcore. We tried to go all power, but we don't know what went wrong. Uh, we're going to go for the casuals and the grandmas next. And they sold a crap ton of units with the Wii. But it had a next to zero attach rate for software. Yeah. They, 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 the people who run Nintendo are out of touch with reality. They don't understand the modern gaming market. They still think it's the very early 1990s or the late 1980s. They just don't get it. No offense. Rest in peace, Mr. Iwata. He was a horrible president. Yeah. He was a great game developer, but a horrible president. And a lot of the other older Japanese men like him are just. They're stuck in their ways, and it's a very hierarchy-like culture over there, and respecting your elders, and it's just, it's going to drive them into the ground, to be honest. And it's sad, but I think maybe it is time for Nintendo to go. Maybe mm. it is, because I'd rather them die out now than them to make mistake after mistake and just completely drive their re- their legacy to death, like to where nobody oh. respects them, nobody loves them anymore, and it's going to get to that point. Yeah, well, I can see. With, see, I've noticed with Nintendo over the years, they've become more uh, family based with their games. Which is... well, now, well, now the games that Nintendo has, um, they do have what you would call kit games because majority yeah. of the games that um, they um, have on Nintendo are for kids. Now, the Wii U, they got Splatoon. Basically, Splatoon is basically more or less of a kids game to me. Mm. Because I mean, you know, like you you can like you know splat you know um, paint everywhere and just have fun in the game. Yeah, that's um, a good game, definitely. There, it, right? it isn't a serious competitive shooter. I played Splatoon. It was kind of fun, you know. It was a different, you know, but it doesn't have the depth needed. It doesn't have the amount of maps needed, the amount of modes, and it just felt, as you said, more kiddie, like a like a kids, a family friendly FPS for the kids. You know, that's yeah. what I felt like, John. Yeah. All right. Um, next, um, let's say Metal Gear Solid Five, The Phantom Pain. What you guys think about it? <laughs> you don't want my opinion on that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, maybe I'll have a nicer opinion than Jerry. Uh, uh, maybe the main game Solid Five was all was all right. You know, it was a. It's not like it was a completely garbage bad game. Like it was a. It, it, overall, the main game is fun, but my problem with uh, MGS5 is that other mode that has all the microtransactions in it. Yeah. That's what I don't like at all. The one gripe with for me with that game is what the flame in hell were they thinking with the demo? Seriously. Mm-hmm. $30? What? Thirty, forty dollars for uh, a. Yeah. that over here it was about fifty, fifty-five quid. Do you know what I mean? And like, yeah. for for the UK, it's really expensive for. Games. It's like it's only like because I played the demo when it come free on air, right? I'm not kidding. I've done that within about ten minutes, right? Yeah. And they're charging fifty quid for it, and I'm thinking, what the hell are you doing? Why didn't you just put it on the PSN free? As a as a demo, so people can play it, then bring out the full title. Not charge people money for a half a, a half a game. You know what I mean? 
Yeah. Well, it's like it's like half a demo. It wasn't even like a full yeah. demo. It's like you're you're paying a full like, game uh, price. Uh, demo though, demo. demo version of the game, but now Ground Zeroes was actually a prologue to Phantom Pain anyway. So I would say it was more or less um, of a demo than half um, a demo. Yeah, but then they shouldn't. They shouldn't have charged us money for it. See, if they, if I mean, they I, could, well, they could have done the right thing by putting it online. I, you know I mean, really great. Yeah, I don't understand why they can't do demos. They, we have the, we have online, we have internet. You can just put up on your store here, free demo. Try this game out. Games coming out in however many months. You know, enjoy. It builds up hype. It gets people excited for it. They yeah. don't have to pay for it, and it yeah. generates positive. You know. Buzz about your game. Remember this, back in the old this, days when you get demo discs with like for free for in like pizza and like you know they'd hand out demos and stuff. Yeah. Even back then, even on physical copy, you know, they didn't charge yeah. you for that. That's what yeah. that's what the is for, though, isn't it? Mm -hmm. That's true. But why? It's just I don't understand what how a company could get away with charging fifty quid for a demo. Well. I think I know how. Yeah. I know why. It's 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 Konami. It's they have a CEO that fully admits to knowing nothing about video games whatsoever until he started working there. Yeah. And even then, he is not a video game fan. And he has made an active promise to stop making you know console games and to shift to mobile market and free to play you know pay to win freemium crap. Mm -hmm. And uh, going to gambling, like pachinko machines that are really big in Japan. Well, that's the type of bullshit that EA would come up with. Now, yeah. I, now that right there, I think, is um, a little bit of BS right there. Yeah. That is BS. You know what I mean? It's just, you don't charge someone for, like, a demo game. That, that should be free on the PSN, right? To play yeah. the demo and, like, get to see where people like it. Bring out the game, then charge people for the game. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. Charging fifty-five quid for a, for a demo, I'm thinking you taking a piss. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Pure and utter greed. They yeah. want to suck every penny that they possibly can out of you. That's why I didn't buy it. I waited for it to come out on the PSN. <laughs> yeah, that's now, true. I should check out PSN because uh, my uh, partner, she has a uh, PS3. Yeah, I actually downloaded a, a couple games recently on there last month. Got Final Fantasy VII and Final Fantasy VIII. Finally yeah. played on my big screen with a controller. Yeah. I haven't played that, and I also downloaded Legend of Dragoon. She's never played that game before, so I figured I it's need not, to let her try it. Half the people that say that the PSN is really... I don't have a dedicated server and all that crap. I think that is just utter bollocks. To be quite honest, because I'm not really had I'm not really had any problems with the PSN. They, they say different things about PlayStation Network. I mean, you know, a lot of people think that Xbox Live is like way superior than PSN or something. Mm. As you know, somebody who owns Xbox Live, I would say that uh, it's not vastly superior. There may be some elements to it which run better or smoother, but it's not like a vastly superior experience. It's an online service. And now, with Xbox Live, they changed the old 360 with the blades. I like that system. Now it looks like Windows 10, and you're bombarded with advertisements and videos and your menus, and it's very annoying. Yeah, yeah. I can understand that. <laughs> Microsoft yeah. loves that advertising and selling your data to... <laughs> Advertisers. I mean, yeah, people. I know. I, I well, can understand that. I like Sony. Every now and then, does a maintenance thing, but that's that's got to be understandable because they want to maintain a good service. You know what I mean? So the service has to be uh, maintained. You know what I mean? Even yeah, though I'm mean, out for a couple um, of hours, but what's I, a couple of hours? Yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, I think mean, for PSN, um, Sony, they have to like maintain. The server, you know, like the servers for a PlayStation Network. Mm. I mean, of course, it's going to have maintenance. Of course, it's going to be down sometimes. Nothing not lasts forever. 
No. Yeah, it didn't last forever. I mean, you know, it's not the lizard squad that's attacking. <laughs> yeah, I mean, a lot of people think that the lizard squad is, you know, back in action, at, you know, attacking the PSN or something. Well, they didn't just attack PSN. They attacked Microsoft as well. Yeah, uh-huh, yeah. Yeah, they did. They did. They are the they are the reason why like the P I think it was uh, I don't know it was two years ago or a year ago when they they attacked the um, the PlayStation Network and totally bloody crashed the system and it took them about I think it was about five weeks to put uh, it back on again. Yeah. And I thought well, you not get a bloody job and stop freaking pissing about with gamers. You know what I mean? But yeah. it's just like. Well, they're just a bunch of little douchebags, mostly, and, and who knows who's really behind it. But you would think that these hackers, if they were, you know, they'd do something good, like, why not, like, hack the government or, you know, put money into people's bank accounts or, you know, well, funny something, good, thing. something good for society instead of attacking a gaming company. Well, the so funny, thing is, though, funny thing is, though, is a couple of weeks, I think it was a couple of months ago, six of them got caught in England. They are actually from the Lizard Squad, and the FBI caught them. About that, I remember reading about that. <laughs> I remember reading about that. Good news, you know what I mean? You get about six of them, but I don't know. How, you don't. We trouble with. We don't know how many there are. Yeah, well, mm. piracy is something that's never going to be stopped. None of these things will ever be truly stopped. You can only just develop new defenses and just keep fighting at it day by day. Swears. Which I wish you would think, though, these companies like Microsoft and Sony, being multi-billion dollar companies, would have a defense system capable of not actually being ha able to hack into, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. but I guess not. And there's certain things, people say like a DDoS attack. That's not a hacking attack. It, it's a denial of service. You overload the server. With like, you got a lot of people that's getting on, um, that's getting online playing games. Like, you know, it's kind of like a roadblock, but it's not actually hacking. Yeah. Yeah, that's what a lot of these people do, and and you can't really defend against it. You can only make your system so it can be up and running after one of these attacks. You know, you gotta, you true. can never stop them. That's well, very true. Yeah, that's definitely true. But, uh, I, think, got, uh, well, I think Sony got sued big time a couple of, uh, a couple of years back for it. They had to pay back over, I think, six million to customers because apparently they got their uh, bank accounts hacked and everything else. You know what I mean? So, <laughs> uh -huh. yeah. Okay, next topic. Um, get um, Dragon Scorpion. What you think about um the brand new Deus Ex? Man, mankind divided. DSX. Yeah, I haven't even seen it. Well, um, I'm talking about DSX, Mankind Divided. You know, with um Adam Jensen, you know from Human Revolution. No. Oh, okay. You never played DSX, so all right. I no. I've played DSX, Human Revolution, or that the previous one. Oh, that oh that game. What's yeah. What are you about then? <laughs> Yeah, um, it's not a bad game. The story, the storyline to it, it's not bad. I kind of like it. Um, yeah. Ultra futuristic type of thing. So from from what they did with the original one on the PC, that's pretty impressive, to be quite honest. But um, I find the gameplay in it was a little bit too short. Mm -hmm. be, um, I don't really like the first person view type on it. Yeah. I think it needs to be uh, in a, like a, um, not first person, but in a third person view. Oh, okay. I think it would be better if they took that route. It would be pretty, you know, pretty decent. I so mean, you, you think, you think the ASX should not be an FPS and should be third person shooter? Um, I think it should be both. Yeah, it should be both of them. I think for like, both. if you're going in for like missions like stealth missions, you know what I mean. It's hard when it's hard to do when you're in 
first in a person. first person view because all you're seeing is your hands. But yeah, you, and then you, you don't know if you're exposed or not. Yeah, it's what yeah. You go into a third person view, you're able to see your surroundings. Do you know what I mean? That way, we yeah. can connect places. Having both uh, is good. You know, uh, Star Wars Battlefront, the old ones at least, I know you could have a first person view or a third person. Mm. You could have a choice. Well, I mean, well, I think for um, DSS, um, Mankind Divided, I think they should have had, like, um, you know, both um, third person and first person view because, like, when you're in first person view, you don't know if you are exposed or anything like that because, like, in third person view, you can actually see your entire surroundings. You know, just to make sure that the enemies don't spot you in certain, um, like certain, certain. Hello. Yeah, I'm right here. Yeah. <laughs> so I've just gone on our uh, bathroom break. Be back in a sec. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, just, I think it does. I think the game does need to be slightly improved a little bit because I think the first person view is all right. Yeah, it needs. It does need that third person view. Yeah, true, true that. No, it's just not. It's when you go and it's like when you got to walk across, like um, say if you're using a staff and you got an option of going across the ceiling on a on a balance you know, on the beams. On yeah. The, just below the roof, you know what I mean? In a third person view you can see where you're going. But with first with a first person you're stuck to your what you see with your hands, you know what I mean? And it's uh -huh. difficult to line yourself up to walk across it safe, you know what I mean? So, yeah. I don't know if you're gonna be as close or if um the enemies are gonna catch you at the right or wrong moments and whatnot. Yeah. I definitely, I definitely think they should do that. Obviously, they can't do it with this new game because they've obviously developed it. Yeah. If they yeah. do it, if they do do well, do do a third game, then yeah, I think they should introduce that into it. Yeah. I mean, the game itself is good. Mhm. Mm yeah, the story of it is fantastic. No. Oh. Yeah. See that we got way small again. It. Don't mute my microphone. <laughs> dog is barking whenever anybody. I'm the special guest. Is the dog? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um. Now I did hear like um that um Windows 10 is going to have like. The woman's voice from Halo on the Xbox One. What you think about that? Oh, the Cortana, the uh, Microsoft copy of Siri. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm not. I'm not a fan, honestly. I I uh, I see it as kind of a useless feature, just like how the Xbox Connect is useless because you can do all those commands with the basic headset. You know, all those voice commands just as well, if not better, with the basic headset. It is pointless to have that. It's I, like, no one has got the same view as I have with that. <laughs> <laughs> it's just... It, do you agree with this, Wade, right? It's a, it's a pointless gimmick. Yep, yep. Absolutely. Pointless gimmick. It's, you know what I mean? It's, the version of the, of the Wiimote with the connection. This, this is the point I made, because oh, I was talking to someone on, on the... Uh, the page earlier on about like apps and stuff like that from Microsoft uh -huh. and even for, for Sony as well and I'm thinking well yes yeah, Sony at the moment has strayed away from the apps and don't gone more into gaming which uh -huh. is good for Sony well, I said to him when is Microsoft going to wake up and stop and, and actually think about what they're doing because at the moment all they're thinking about is apps. And I'm well, like, well, basically, um, I think what Microsoft is really doing, they're just trying to one up on Sony because all they're doing is, um, you know, like bringing out new features, new, you know, like new updates and everything because they're trying their best to, you know, like get a lot of consumers to actually go out and buy the Xbox One. 
Uh, you see, right, right, right there, right? Why aren't their sales not going up? <laughs> yeah. That says it all. See, I've noticed over the past year or so, Microsoft sales are really dropping because of the... Because, uh, why do gamers want apps? Seriously, well, we want apps. We go out and bloody buy a mobile phone, for Christ's sake. A console yeah. is for gaming. It should well, be pure the problem for gaming. Well, the with the Xbox One, uh, their hands are somewhat tied because the whole entire system, when it was designed and developed, wasn't designed as a gaming system. It was designed as an all multimedia device. Mm. Put your TV, put your cable, put your satellite, put your this and that through it. And it wasn't about gaming. Gaming was more of an afterthought. It feels as if Microsoft are trying to turn the the, uh, the Xbox into a PC. Yeah, is, I agree. Um, With the uh, Windows 10 integration? Yeah, yeah they, um, they're trying to like stream their games from the Xbox One to PC. But um, my gripe with that is, I mean, uh, when they do that, there won't be no need to make any more games on the system. No. Maybe they get the way that they're slowly transitioning out of the gaming industry altogether. That's a bad move. Yeah. Uh, it is a bad move right there. That is seriously a bad move because... If Microsoft try to take over the PC market, they're going to outdo themselves with the PCs completely because everyone's... I don't see the point of making, a, uh, making an Xbox One, right, or the next Xbox into a PC when there's already PCs out. Why don't they just keep to what they're doing right now and try not to keep making it into a PC? Because, I don't know, it's just they're, they're, they're shooting themselves in the foot. Well, yeah, basically, basically, they are in the foot, man. I agree mm -hmm. with that. It is definitely like a shot to the face with a shotgun. You know, it's like, I feel like we're going through it all over again. It's like, they just started doing something good and something better. They got rid of all the stupid policies and unbundled the Kinect. That's great. Sales got up, and now they're obsessing over apps and Windows 10, things that people don't want, didn't ask for, Mm. And they're going through it all over again. They're going to have another big, you know, customer backlash, especially with the privacy concerns due to Windows 10. Torrent sites won't touch Windows 10. I'm definitely not going to touch Windows 10 for that fact alone. Let alone, yes, I know Windows 7 can spy on you. Yes, I know other Windows, but it's nowhere near as bad or as intrusive as Windows 10. Actually, Microsoft can't touch them. They can block it. They can't block them. Depending on your server, if they can block them, if you're on the on, say if you're doing it from the Xbox One, yeah, they can block them on that side. But not if you're on a PC, they can't do nothing. It's down to the provider that you're actually with <laughs> that can block them. Yeah. Well, I've heard a lot of things that some torrent sites just won't accept a Windows 10 download due to the privacy concerns for them. Yeah, I think it depends on the, on the torrent sites, though, but not a lot of people do it, but I know, I know some do, but... Yeah. There is there's a flaw, actually, in the, uh, the FBI warning thing about um, piracy. Oh, um, yeah. There's a flaw in it because if you're not if you're doing it for personal use, they can't touch you. See, it's only when you you really, only when you download them, put them onto disc, and try to sell them. Yeah. They've got you. Then yeah, I could see somebody and understand them being pissed off and copyright. Even I would be pissed off as a company if people are downloading it and then selling and making money off it. Yeah. Then that's a problem. But if they're just for the personal use, it's basically free advertising. They can't afford to buy your shit at that time anyways, so mm. it's not going to harm you. Like, look at Diablo 2. Diablo 2 is the most pirated, one of those pirated games ever. Most accounts online were, you know, but look how much money it made them and how much it did. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, piracy, like, the Game of Thrones creator, he says, if people download my show or pirate 
whatever, he says, I don't care. It's free advertising. Thank you for being interested in my product. Fair play to him. <laughs> yeah, true. That's true. That's very true. The, the obsession with copyright laws and piracy is going to kill many of the things that we love and enjoy. Gaming is one of them. Mm. Yeah. Very true. Th think of how good the GameCube would have done if it had DVD discs, a built-in DVD player, as every other system was. Think of how good if it would have been if it would have had a hard drive in it. We mm -hmm. still would have got the, the Nintendo software, the more kid-friendly, family-friendly things. Of well, course it would have been a bigger bloody... It would have actually been a bigger competition then, because then Nintendo yeah. would be right up next to Sony and Microsoft. And imagine if they had a cheap online service that was free or whatever, even if it wasn't the greatest, if they would have had something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There you go. Like I don't understand. They could be king of the market right now. They, could, they have all the potential. They have the strongest IP the most brand recognition, but they're losing all that respect and love. They're losing it. People that have been dedicated for so many years, you can only get beat up so many times before you say, I've had enough of this abuse, I'm leaving this relationship, goodbye. Well, it's like I said the other day, you know what I mean, about Nintendo. It's like, since, since the 80s, you know what I mean, since Atari you completely crashed the industry with that E.T. crap, you know what I mean? Uh -huh. it, it was Nintendo that actually brought the gaming industry back from the brink of death, you know what I mean? But now yeah. since, now with all the new consoles coming in, it seems to like Nintendo has dropped back when they should be up. Close, they should be in par with Microsoft and Sony right now, but they're not. I don't understand what the hell are they, they've actually do, they're what they're doing wrong to get that far back. It's well, just, you got uh, Reggie fils former VP of marketing of Pizza Hut, and he went from that job to being a really big shot at Nintendo. Yeah, true. Why? Why would you do that? Why would you put someone in a position where they're not trained, not qualified to run? Exactly. 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 That's you don't put someone that's untrained in, in a position um, that's running a full, like a proper company like that, you know what I mean? You don't do it. Mm-hmm. Right, and then look at you. Look at you. I'm going to say things that might piss people off. Like, uh, I know we want to just die, so I'm going to be saying a lot of negative things about you. Look, you go way back to the GameCube days, you know, he says, uh, we believe that, and he has a point, because, you know, we see the death of split-screen gaming today. I'll get into that later concerning Halo 5. Yeah. But, you know, he mm -hmm. says, split-screen is vastly superior, and we believe that you should play that way, so we will not be offering online. We believe that online isn't popular or prevalent, and we believe that gamers care much more about this than this. And that was the reason for not having online. And then they uh -huh. went with the whole, you know, and then it's like, and he kept making excuses like, please understand, I apologize, please understand, I apologize, in every single public address, or speech that he made, he was always saying, please understand, and I apologize. With the Wii, he says, oh, we believe that people don't really have many HD TV sets, so we will not be including that feature in our console. We believe this, and we believe that. Well, they've been believing the, long, the wrong thing for a very long time. And look where it's got them now. He recently made a statement saying, Nintendo is not good at competing. I don't understand why they didn't fire him right on the spot for saying That's that. Bad. That's bad. That is seriously bad marketing right there. He says, uh, Nintendo is not good at competing, so we're going to do this. It's like, he should say, you know, if he wants to say, in the past, you know, people have said Nintendo isn't good at this. Well, I'm going to change that. I'm the president. I'm going to make this company good at competing again. If you think we're not good, just wait till you see what's next. You know, he doesn't do... I would be a better president than him. Mm -hmm. Any one of us would be a better president than him. I think we understand the modern gaming market. He doesn't. I think back in I would say in back in the eighties, when in um, online, um, I said back then it wouldn't have been so popular as it is now because in the eighties we 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 never really tapped into that market, did we, in the gaming industry? So it was kind of more 
like cartridge gaming and stuff like that still back in the 80s. It retro. It was more retro back in the 80s with yeah. games, though. It wasn't until we reached, what, it was 96, we started to get more into, uh, into more, more decent upgraded games, but it wasn't until now we got the online gaming. Yeah. Which has hit the market something chronic because everyone loves online gaming now, you know what I mean? Online yeah. gaming really came into the sixth generation with the PS2, Xbox, and uh, GameCube and all that. Yeah. Now, really. I can understand his point being, being back in the 80s, but uh-huh. still, to say that online is... Um, not popular. That was kind of a bad choice to make because if he if he did say that and then and Nintendo actually started to do online back then, they would be a lot better now. Well, here, here's the thing that's confusing me too. Nintendo was the first console that had online. They yeah. had it with Super Nintendo. They even had it with the Famicom back in Japan. They had all these cool ideas and they just never utilized them properly. Mm. You could even do your banking on the Super Nintendo online That's with some true. cartridge. That's crazy. Yeah. yeah. I've never Nintendo, heard of that. And that's the thing that just boggles my mind. They're one of the best innovators. They make mistakes. They make things that big screw-up gimmicks like the Wiimote and motion controls. But they were the first one to have the Rumble Pack, the first one to have the analog stick, the first one to add all these different buttons. They were the first one to do a lot of different things, and they just... Now they think that every system has to have some crazy new fangled gimmick, some new way to play. You know, I don't... I, don't get me wrong. Motion control gaming does have a certain place with certain games, like DDR. You know, you, you want to play that with motion controls or, like, moving around, right? But there's, yeah. uh-huh. it's just, I don't want to play a game. I bought a big screen for a reason. I want to sit down with a controller and absorb myself into the experience, get fully immersed, and play the game that way. I don't want to dance around and do weird actions to play my game. What is Nintendo going to do next? You play your game by blinking your eyes or just moving your hands again, like the Power Glove 2.0? Nobody <clears throat> wants these things. They're a fun little gimmick that you do bring out for a joke, but they're not something you're going to do every day. No, nah, that's true. Yeah, that is true. Well, now, to be honest, now, what I think about Project Morpheus from Sony and, um, I think that, um, it's going to be much more diverse with virtual gaming, with VR gaming, you know, and to be honest, I just feel that VR gaming might not be as well as mainstream gaming is right now with the consoles and whatnot, PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. Uh, maybe in the far future, virtual reality gaming will absolutely take over You know this kind of game that we have now. But that's not yeah. until we reach the technology of StarCraft Holodeck or like the movie Total Recall where you're in your own virtual uh, environment. So I mean, it only reaches that you're never going to see VR overtake gaming. The current VR we have now, all it is is like strapping a TV to your face. So you can't yeah. see anything in your actual environment, and you're stumbling around your room. Can you, can you imagine inviting your friends over, hey, want to come over and play some virtual reality game? All right, I got lots of headsets. Let's go. So you're all sitting on a couch or a big, big room. you are all got the headsets on. You're bumbling around. You're hitting the walls. You're hitting into each other, knocking over shit. Yeah. No, thank you. Give me a lot of people in casualty. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of broken things in the house, and that's why I say no. I mean, the Project Morpheus, I did see some of the games for it. I'll tell you, some of them are really good, you know what I mean? But I don't yeah. think um, gaming should go fully into VR, not yet, because they tried VR back in the 90s. Can you remember those big bloody um, in the arcades with a big massive? Oh, yeah. I yeah. remember. I remember arcade. I miss them. No, you put those big massive headsets on on your head. You know what I mean? Does everyone remember the one of the most famous or infamous VR headsets of all time, the Virtual Boy? Oh yeah. 
Yeah, that I thing. That. I don't remember that one. Well, it's good that you don't, because it was a piece of crap. <laughs> I like it. I remember, I remember the bloody the big ones, you know, where they get the like this look. Oh, it's like a futuristic thing you stand in. You had to put the gloves on and then put this bloody big, massive, like heavy helmet on your frigging head. You know what I mean? Massive visor. I remember the VR they did with that. That was back in the nineties, but bloody hell, those things were heavy. You barely move your head. You know what I mean? It was like every time you move your head, it was like it would make you swing your head. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, I think. I mean, now, with the VR they're doing now, they're making it more comfortable for you to sit there and play a game. But some of the games they're going to do, is it going to cause someone a heart attack? Because you, can you imagine them doing a horror game um, like that yeah. VR? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, mean it will cause a lot of motion sickness because... Your body knows that it's not moving. Your body knows that you're playing a game. You're staying stacked. But at the same time, it tricks your eyes into thinking you're seeing something that's not there. And yeah. it's completely enclosed. And it causes people to lose their balance and other things. Mm. It's just its a gimmick. It's something that might be fun to try. You know, hey, try this out. But it's not something that you're going to invite the friends over or the family over to gather around. Gaming, you can do that. you got your big high-definition TV set. you got multiple yeah. controllers. Uh, you know, and then there you go. You're all ready for a great night. But this is never going to take off like that. No, yeah. it's going to be a fire. I mean, it's going to be like a year thing, and it's just going to phase out. Yeah, true. All right, next topic. Um, now I want to know you guys' opinions on Microsoft and Machinima. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I knew you were going to bring that up. <laughs> I have been complaining about this since I knew about this years ago. Like when they were doing all these deals at the beginning with the companies. I knew they were bullshit deals. Like, hey, you know, we'll give you this and this much money, but you can't say anything negative about the Xbox One. Microsoft tried so hard to quash any kind of dissent on all their different videos where they were talking about the Xbox One. They were silencing comments. They were shutting down ratings. They were doing everything they can, but no matter how hard they tried, our voices were too loud and too strong. We weren't going to take that shit. Always online, 24-hour uh, online check-in. If you don't check in to the internet every 24 hours, your system bricks and won't work. You can't trade games. You can't you know, have used games on your system. The games work like an install disk, and once you use it for that system, it will not work in any other system, and that game is tied only to that system. Mm. That was some bullshit. See, yeah. I'm not going to say this for because I'm I'm saying I'm not going to say this as a fanboy, but paying off someone to give good review only good reviews on a console and games. That's so, low. Do they not know that the uh, the Federal Trading Commission are watching them? You know what I mean? Obviously it's, not. They didn't know. They really no, didn't. This is why. You see, I think the Federal Trade Commission as tweaked on to the gaming industry because um, I don't know if you remember a game that Alien Clone and Marines that Sega brought out. Uh, oh yeah, I remember that. I was so disappointed. I'm glad I never bought it. Yeah. I didn't buy that game either, but um, I did hear like um, a lot of bad stuff about it. What they showed at E3 was absolute stunning. That game would have been so perfect the way they done it, but the final product that we got was wasn't even close to what they showed, right? And we found out um, I think it was a week after it was released. That I think we just was got into that video. Video. I think we just got suckered in because like certain games that you see at E3, um, like in the trailer, you think that you're gonna get the exact type of game as they showed it at E3, but with the final project of the game come out, you're like, what the hell? Or what the fuck? This is not the game that they showed at E3. Yeah. I don't know. I don't think it was, I don't think it was Sega's fault. Because yeah. I, I read an article apparently Sega didn't have the time to fully like develop the game, so they they 
They made half of it, but they sent the game over to uh, TimeGate Studios to finish off. And what TimeGate Studios done was brought back a piece of shit to Sega, right? And um, of course, they they that they had, obviously they had a deadline to like release the game, and they didn't have enough time to make the game more better. So that's yeah. why the piece of shit game that we got on launch, <laughs> launch the wasn't the game we had wasn't the game that they showed at E3, and this is why Sega got sued, and Time yeah. Studios are no longer in business. Well, yeah. You know, I, I miss, I'm going to say a quote and then I'll continue on saying, uh, I miss the days when games are created with dreams and passions in mind, not just profits. Yeah. And it is because that most games today are made with not dreams or passions in mind, but just profits mm. that we're getting things like this. Why can't they give the game the proper time it needs? Why can't they delay the game? Because games are no longer made for you and I. They're made purely so that CEOs and shareholders can make more money. It's all about making money. Nobody, hardly anybody in the gaming industry today has pride and passion in what they do and really has a dream of making a great game. Very few have that same dream or passion. Now it's all, I'm going to get in the gaming industry, I'm going to make so much money, I'm going to make a hit mobile title, charge 99 cents, make people pay to win, and I'll make thousands of do millions of dollars. You know, that's a... Yeah, people true. get into it now. That nobody has a dream. I want to make this brilliant game that you know everyone can enjoy and love for years to come. Well, this I know probably I know people are going to probably shoot me for saying this, but um, Destiny. I mean, they spent what what five hundred million on advertisement, and the game. Yeah, the game was good, but when you start playing it, you're thinking, well, this is a piece of shit. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like um, it's like you do the eighteen missions, but then you're stuck doing the same thing every day, doing the same missions over and over again, and it it's it's like Diablo three and Halo mixed together. Yeah, it's it's like a game. It's like they purposely like because when the game was launched, right? They said that there'd be two other DLCs now. It seems to me like I think it was the House of Wolves and uh -huh. the, um, Into the Dark or something like that. It seems to me these two like DLCs were a part of the game in the first place before yeah. long. And you can actually look it up. There was locked on the disc DLC for Destiny. Destiny was a disappointment for many reasons. Me, I was originally excited about Destiny. I thought, okay, their first project outside of Halo. I can't wait to see what they do. Sure, Reach wasn't that great, but it was better than Halo 4, which was, to me, Call of Duty in Halo. You know, it was like, it wasn't good for me. Yeah. And I was so excited, and then I started to watch more about Destiny. I played the demo, and it's like, this is not, I'm not liking this. And then I find out there's no story in the game. There's yeah. practically zero story in the game. You have to go online to read some book or something. When Halo was awesome that way. Halo had great gameplay, it had a, a stellar online component, and it had tons of story in the game. Like the campaign, mm -hmm. I can't wait to try a Halo 5 campaign. I got some complaints about that game as a whole, but regardless of those complaints, I want to see how the story ends, because Halo has a great story. That's what I was expecting out of Destiny. I thought, wow, this is going to have a kick-ass story. This looks so interesting. And then there's nothing to it. I don't care about this world. I don't care about saving anybody. I don't care about nothing. I there's no story whatsoever. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. the, that's the thing with Destiny. Even when people being a film review, I can see mm -hmm. the failure in it. One is like you just woken up after what a thousand years. No explanation why he's been asleep for all that time. Like you know what I mean? no explanation of like who you are as a character. Then you get thrown into this like world, and you're thinking, "Well, hang on a minute, where's the bloody background story?" Because all you're getting is like, "Oh, they've come from the stars," and this traveler thing. And I'm thinking, "Well, you spent five hundred million on bloody marketing. Where's the rest of that gone into the game?" <laughs> yeah, true. No, it's just. 
They could have had that budget and put that into the game, and it would have been a lot better. It needed. It really did need it. Fir that first story, I'm not being funny, but that was a piss-poor start for a story. Yeah, I agree with that, Dragon. I agree with that. You know what I mean? It need, you, you've got to have a pro, a, what they call it, a prelogue or pro, uh, epilogue, where you get a background story of events beforehand, you know what I mean? You get to get, you get the story to introduce yourself to the character that you're playing. Yeah. See, this is what I loved about um, Mass Effect. Mm -hmm. You weren't just thrown into that game. You actually developed, you, your character was actually developed from the start to the end. And you got yeah. to know your character, you know what I mean? And that storyline was absolutely phenomenal in that game. It has to be very immersive as the character in the game. Yeah. yeah, And, and also, don't forget the, the codex and the compendium in uh, Mass Effect. You, it has tons of backstory you can read through, listen to, it'll read for you. You can learn about the, the major different races, different planets, technology. It was Mass Effect had a great story arc, even though I... I personally hated the ending. I thought it deserved way better, and it really let me down. Leading up to that point, it was an excellent ride. Well, the yeah. number three. Well, the Mass first Effect thing. is definitely better than Destiny. Yeah. yeah. I think, I, I think made, well, the mistake they did with Mass Effect 3 was EA's fault for that. I think EA was pressuring um, Bioware to uh, launch the game. Early when they won. Yeah, also, there's something about a leaked ending in that it was just Casey Hudson and this one other dude that sat there and totally redid, redid everything for the ending. Like yeah. for a series that was that epic, a series that was being touted as the new generation of Star Wars, like the new Star Wars for a new generation. It was really, really good. It was more mature. It wasn't so kid like. It was it was really something special and. I felt that series deserved so much more instead of a moving picture montage as an extended cut DLC. I yeah. thought it deserved more than yeah. just A, B, or C ending where the only thing that changes really is the color of the explosion, where your all your choices, everything that you did up to that point, didn't matter. The themes yeah. of Mass Effect this is about, you yeah. know, growing, evolving, making a difference, making things that matter, you know, making choices and making a difference. All that was thrown out the window with the ending. Up to that point, it was really good. I um, knew, well, to be quite honest, with the third game, the choices didn't really matter because that, that ending was inevitable anyway because this was, they did say at the beginning that the third game will be the end of um, Shepard's story. So him dying at the end was inevitable. And, well, you know, well, I think they should have made uh, endings that were different, like yeah, of course, have a bad ending. Everything is destroyed. Everybody dies. It's all screwed up. You mm. have that. And you got to have your good ending, too. Yeah, maybe there's some destruction, but in general, the good guys win. You know, you get to have that, you know, moment with all your squad mates and, you know, you know, we finally did it. And, you know, you like, because there's so many different endings that you can get. You should have, they should have had more variety. There wasn't enough variety in the endings. Yeah. I'm not saying I'm pissed off because Shepard dies or such and such person dies, but you got to have a variety of different endings to suit your different choices. Like when you yeah. go throughout the game and you save this race, instead of it being represented in like a cool cutscene or something, it just adds money to your war resources. Yeah, I think I had this yeah. discussion um, oh, just after they launched the game, you know what I mean, with the ending and that lot. See, the way I would have handled that ending is because you got, you got a guy like Shepard, right? He's practically saved the bloody galaxy. And he dies doing it. And yet that ending gives him no respect whatsoever. You know what I mean? With that yeah. And like, yeah. the way I would have done it, I would have had the ending with all the races together, not in like a stupid bloody like pictorial type scene. I would have had it on, I would have had like a funeral scene with every single race there, right? With um, uh, with Joker and all the rest of the team, obviously, well, they might not have been there, but they might have. Got, you know what I mean? I would have had them there. Yeah. With a massive statue. Yeah. Right? I think what you um what you're really um aiming at, Dragon, is kind of like a military funeral. 
Yeah, you know what I mean? Having a statue, a plaque or a statue of Commander Shepard, you know what I mean? With all the races there. Yeah. Proper, yeah. like, funeral scene to give him a, you know, like a hero send-off. Yeah, and, and to honor his sacrifice. Yeah. That's the way I would have done the ending of that. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. You know what I mean? Because you don't, it's like, three games, yeah, you're playing the hero, and he, he put his heart, you know what I mean, playing the Calvary of the character. It's not just, it wasn't just I a game. Some people were pissed off that they couldn't have blue alien babies. <laughs> <laughs> Got Krogan ones as well. Oh my God! Would I knew you? I, I, I wanted to see the, it culminate with uh, that blue Liara chick from the first game. I wanted to see you know something happen there where you get a good ending where maybe you can you know you get to live with her or something or. Seriously though, can you imagine a Krogan baby? <laughs> a Krogan mixed with a a sorry. No, just a Krogan baby. It, it would look like a friggin' hermit crab. You know what I mean? Yeah, it would be <laughs> <laughs> yeah, wow! No, it should, the game should have had a more, a more better send off for for uh, the character. Yeah, the and that's, thing, that's what I think people are most pissed off about is that it just it deserves so much more, and it felt rushed. It felt cheap. It felt cut and paste. But that's this, what it felt like. But this is the thing, though. What's that mysterious scene? I don't know if you watch. I don't know if you, you. I don't know if you whether you had that scene where you see um, you see Commander Shepard's body in the wreckage. Yeah, and then it breathes. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's, that's the thing about. too. That pissed people off. I don't know, like, what's going on. So then they made the extended cut DLC, which just a, a, a picture montage of. But then, then the, there's that. There's and then, but then there's that. That in. Oh, was that the indoctrination theory? Yeah. Whether what he went through was actually a dream or wasn't actually happening. Uh -huh. Yeah, that, that was a good idea. That was an interesting idea where he's being indoctrinated and he's dreaming all this stuff. Yeah. You know, I thought that idea was much better and would have, you know, led up to a fourth, you know, and I don't know, it's just, it's done, it's over with, Bioware, I'm not interested really in Bioware anymore. To me, they've become EAWare. They're yeah. not Bioware anymore. It's EAWare. And you oh, know how yeah. even, even Ray Mazuka and the other CEO dude that was big with Bioware are also CEOs on EA's board now. You know, they're very corporate. Oh. They're very... You know, but, I don't want to see them make a sequel to Jade Empire, even though that's an amazing game that deserves uh, a sequel. They will put microtransactions in it. They'll put an unnecessary multiplayer. There's another thing that pissed me off in Mass Effect 3. Multiplayer in Mass Effect. It's just a waste of resources, a waste of time, and a waste of money that would have been better served putting into the story and making, you know, the right game that you need to. Yeah, that was kind of pointless in the third game, to be quite honest. To make it, what, a cheesy Gears of War clone horde mode? It is, all it was is a war asset. This topic I wanted to bring up. Um, this gives them for ultimate It was to sell microtransactions and buying card packs so you can get better weapons. Mm. He, Peter Moore says he promises that every EA game from here on out will have some type of microtransaction. Oh, bloody hate that guy. I hate, I hate that guy. Yeah, if I see him... And I see him sitting there smile, and I go and punch him right in the mouth. Have like, um, you know, Battlefront. I'm kind of pissed right there. The whole Star Wars Battlefront thing. Battlefront, yeah, I'm disappointed in that too. It's not a true Star Wars Battlefront game. It's it's EA's uh, Star Wars Battlefield. I mean, yeah. They see how oh, was it? Battlefront Two was a good game. Reason why it was a good game is because not only did it add ground battles, you had space battles, you had the um, Galaxy Got a Conquest. Literally, with this new Star Wars Battlefront game, they've taken away the campaign mode. They've taken away Galaxy Quest. They've literally taken away space battles. Listen. I think Star Wars 
three, it doesn't feel like Star Wars without the space battles. You got to have space battles. Whether they do, I've they, I've got a feeling they might actually do that with a DLC. But thing is, without see the moment they said they're not going to have a, <coughs> excuse me, they're not going to have a, 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 a campaign mode in it. I knew straight away when they said that this is going to be a cash cow. Well, here's another reason we pissed off. Guess how many players you can have max in this game? This is the largest amount of players you can have. Twenty versus twenty. Joking. On, on, on the current gen consoles, when you go back to the original Xbox, Star Wars Battlefront 2, you could have, uh, this might have been PC, but maybe maybe with bots you can do this, but you can have up to 32 versus 32 on all modes. Mm. You can have up to 20 versus 20 less on some modes for EA's Battlefront. Star Wars Battlefront 2 had uh, a total of 33 different maps, 16 planets, plus 4 DLC maps, and what does EA's Battlefront have? As far as I know, eight total maps with four planets. You know, you got, uh, you know, it, it had Campaign. Battlefront 2 had Campaign, Galactic Conquest, Instant Action. Guess who has none of those? EA's Battlefront. Uh, Star Wars Battlefront 2 had space battles and was moddable. EA's Battlefront has no space battles and is not moddable. Well, according to what they're saying uh, is that the four... Um, Four planets that they've got, apparently it's going to be about 34 maps, they said. And uh, as far as I know, EA's Battlefront only has AI bots in one game mode. Yeah. I don't like the well, the fact that, the, well, the earliest news of just where we got last week about them only having one server browser. What the hell's that about? Adats are not playable in Star Wars uh, in EA's Battlefront, but was fully playable in Star Wars Battlefront 2. You could control the Adat and move it around. Yeah. But this, this whole this whole thing with only having one browser server that um, that to me is like saying to the casual gamers, right, go fuck yourselves. That really does, you know what I mean? Because one server, right? That means you're gonna have a lot of hardcore gamers on there, right? And there are a few hardcore gamers that play like online shooters. And you get the casual gamers. We're not that great. We're not that great at shooting. You know what I mean? Our stats are not that great. And you can see that with people in the stats. Now, you come on a ga You come on there with an uneven match. You're not getting anywhere. That means all the hardcore gamers. Are getting all the leveled up, getting better and better, why the casual gamers are slowly, slowly leveling up but not getting very far with it. And it's like it's cutting out all the casual gamers. That's why you gotta have a good matchmaking system. In yeah. This is why two servers should be allowed on there. They should have one for the hardcore gamers, one for the casual gamers. Two well, servers. Yeah. That's all they need is two servers. Just have a good matchmaking system. Halo 2 and 3, when it was for online for them, not the Master Chief, because I'm talking the real Halo 2 and 3, had an amazing matchmaking system. Yeah. Yes, you would get matched sometimes unfairly, but most of the time it was very fair matching with similar skill people. Mm. Now, though, you don't get that. Now, 343, with their Master Chief collection, I'm getting routinely matched with people who are MLG wannabe pro players who you can clearly tell play ranked. You can look up their ranks that are in. I only play big team battle usually. I'm not a pro player. I just play, you know, for fun. And I'm getting matched with people who are really highly ranked, or I'll get matched with people who are so incredibly noobish that I am just wiping the floor with, like I got wiped the floor with. Yeah. It's fucked up. You can have a good matchmaking system. Halo 2 and 3 had a brilliant. System for that. That's what I think is going to backfire with this game. I really do. I think it's going to backfire with it because they're basing it on skill based. Uh huh. That's what puts me off with it. It's not just like they're not. They're, I'm not bothered about them not having a campaign in there, but that immediately puts me off anyway. Because not having a campaign mode, not even yeah. Sometimes they got they. I do admit some of their campaigns, even with dice and, and like Battlefield, they're, they're kind of crap, but still playable. You know what I mean? Uh -huh. 
and them taking away that taking away that element is taking the variety out of the game and only sticking to an M- MMO game, which says yeah. to me, cash cow. So in other words, they're getting people sucked into playing it, and then they'll say, cut oh, well a month down the line, oh we got a new DLC for you, and it'll cost you fifteen pound. Then another fifteen pound to go on top of on top of what you've already paid. You know what I mean? And it just oh. It's, it, I feel like it's going to be another one, another destiny. I know it's Star Wars because it's one of the most popular franchises ever. You know what I mean? But don't forget the remaster of um, Gears of War Ultimate Edition. Everybody was hyping over that game right there. Although yeah. that's just yeah. a glorified. I'm not being funny to any like Xbox fans out there, but that's just a glorified bloody remake. <laughs> It is a remake, uh, and, but my cousin's playing it. He's enjoying it. But it, it is just, it's a remake. you got to go into it knowing it's a remake. Don't expect, like, a brand new experience. Yeah. It's a remake. It's an updated version for the new system. I have seen that they've improved on the graphics, and that's good for the game. But the thing is, it yeah. that's just a remastered game. It's nothing mm. new. It's not, it's not a, a totally new game. It's just remastered. And that's something else that's turning people off, and me included. To me, it seems like it's the eighth gen. Eighth gen equals seventh gen remasters. Mm. It's it's getting worse in the bloody movie industry with the reboots and re and bloody, you know, yeah. remakes. Yeah. Again, the gaming industry is getting the same. I think we're going to have another crash, just like Atari. I. I think e- the E.T. game broke the camel's back, but there were other games that led to its crash, too. There were a lot of games that looked very similar and played nearly exactly the same, but had a different title on it. This repetition, this every game becoming the same, you know, with every shooter having to be a fucking Call of Duty, dude bro, action twitch shooter. If you like that, that's, that stuff, fine. But... Every game now, every FPS is becoming just like that. And then you'll have a racing game. And then every racing game is going to copy that one preeminent racing game. So every racing game is going to feel exactly like that. That's where we're moving to. Every game in genre is the same as every game in that genre. Yeah. And that's what really led to the crash, I believe, of that. And E.T. was just, it broke the camel's back. People were excited for it. And then, you know, it was a piece of crap. And then it's like, that's it. We're done. No the, more. Well, the documentary that I watched, it wasn't just like Atari's uh, obviously business with the ET game, but it was it was going downhill with the microtransactions. Yeah, that's that really when it started. That, that is when it started, but that ET pushed it over the edge. And I totally agree with you, um, Dragon Scorpion. I mean, one hundred percent agreeable right there man I mean the company did go down as far as micro transactions but I think they just really rushed the ET game that really caused a complete failure for the game and yeah. for about a month and a half of development time yeah mm-hmm. yeah it did one <laughs> programmer yeah, I think a lot of the game, a lot I did notice because they were, um, as I was watching a documentary, they were going through a lot of the game industry as well. But um, they were saying on there a lot of the gamers back in that that back in the Atari days were getting really pissed off with the gaming companies with these microtransactions. Now they said the market was slightly dro- was dropping all the way down when they started doing that because no one was buying the games. Because of the microtransactions. How but, do you have microtransactions in an Atari game? Well, it was apparently it was all like you know, a lot of small games that they had, you know, like on the PCs and stuff like that. These little stupid like bubble games, or anything like that, with the DLCs, and apparently they that is what actually basically just a bunch of crappy little shitty games that yeah. all played the same and were of low yeah. quality. That's what not microtransactions is where is more of a modern thing with online. That's what gave board of microtransactions. You're thinking of just 
really shitty short games that were kind of like the mobile games of today. But they were doing that with they were actually they actually were microtransactions. They were doing like um, little add-on type of things for the games. You know what I mean? Buying like small things, and people were actually getting fed up with the gaming industry back then with the microtransactions. But it yeah, wasn't well, just that. The, um, Atari documentary. It is on YouTube. Yeah. Um, it not, only shows half. Only shows no. half of it, though. Maybe try to provide a link to that documentary in the description later. Yeah, I think I remember yeah. it, was on, it was on DVD because I remember watching it. It's, it's quite insightful. Well, um, what the industry was like before. Now, you know what I mean. But yeah, with their microtransactions for the PCs and stuff like that, that was already killing the industry back then. But then, as soon as as soon as Atari brought out that Rush game of ET, that was it. Boom! That just lit the that just lit the fuse of the bomb, and that was it. Well, I also argue that, that the, uh, the port, Atari port of Pac Man, really harmed this, really harmed them. Yeah. Because they made so many cartridges is that more cartridges than their actual were systems out. Mm. And that's how many they expected this to sell, and it turns out that it was a very piss poor port of it. Because the arcade hardware was far superior, and they were trying to port it to like a vastly weaker system, and it just people expected something like the arcade, but what they got was nothing like the arcade. Yeah, that made a lot of people pissed off too. I mean, it's exactly the same way this industry is going right now. Yep. it really is. I don't, I don't mean it's like gonna like crash just immediately straight away. Oh. It's never going to crash the way that it did before. No, it's, it's too casual now. Too many people are into gaming now. It's never going to crash that same way. But it, we no. will suffer a big gaming recession where a lot of these old legendary developing companies are gone. Konami will be gone. Capcom will be gone. Uh, this, whatever other companies, you know, will be gone. Well, this is going to actually going to shock you, right? One thing with Konami, they. They were standing tall when they um actually had Hideo Kojima working for them, the father of Metal Gear Solid. Now, Konami was a very strong company, but when they decided to get rid of um Hideo, well, Mr. Kojima, they just really made a huge mistake of getting rid of that man. Hmm. Yeah, they got rid of basically the only guy that made them, like, really, really big. Well, this is the thing, because this, this is actually going to... Sh- I don't know if you're aware of this. I actually looked up at how many actual game companies there are in this world, right? Yeah. Uh-huh. Over 60 gaming companies have gone out of business or been brought out. And there's only about eight left. That are independent? Yeah. Oh. I actually looked it up. It just, it's, I was actually shocked because some of some of them now are on the verge of either going bankrupt or being um, or being brought out. Yeah, and they'll probably be bought out by a major publisher like Activision or EA, and then everything. Every game's going to have microtransactions. Every game's going to have no story. Every game's going to be locked on the disc DLC. You're going to have to buy each and every tiny little piece of the game. If you're playing the racing game, you're going to have to buy gas. Well, you're going to you're have to do everything. And that that will sink the industry right there. Once all these companies are bought up and they're under some big publisher's umbrella where they have to cater to the shareholders, gaming will, will, will crash big. Mm-hmm. It's like how many gaming companies have we lost over the past three years? EA is a big, big problem with that. EA will go in there, they'll buy a company, they'll buy a great developer like Pandemic that made the old Star Wars Battlefront, then they'll close them. Or, or first, they'll they'll make them work on a shitty project that's probably going to fail. It fails, and then they close the studio and they ship the developers left and right, and the studio's gone. They've done that to so many different game developers. Oh yeah, that's why that's what EA's EA's famous for. <laughs> I did not even know that we are losing that many gaming companies right now. I yeah. did not know that. I mean, like, was it two years ago? T I think TSQ, the one that made um, 
Oh. Wrestling. They made a lot of the wrestling games. Dark uh, Side. THQ, yeah. Yeah. They made a lot of WWE stuff. They made some brilliant games, but they couldn't keep up with the market because um, cause it obviously with the cost in that lot, but they went out of business. They went bankrupt. Yeah. I mean, it's just... <laughs> There's no, I don't know whether it's just like the financial troubles that's going on at the moment, obviously, but... Surprise that Capcom is still in business. I'm surprised with that. I'm shocked and amazing. I mean, they actually did one hell of a job on the Resident Evil HD. Mom's waiting for you. <laughs> I wouldn't worry about it now, Shady. They actually did pretty well. Yeah, Capcom? Yeah, they, I'm surprised they're still in business. And as you were saying, that Resident Evil remake or redo was actually decent. I liked it. Yeah, and they're also working on um, the remaster of the original Resident Evil 2. If they do that right, they give it the same treatment as they did with the original Resident Evil remake, I think it will be a smashing success and it will sell really well. My fear is that they're going to take this uh, fan remake they had that was kind of like RE4 but mixed with RE2, and they're going to make it, yet again, a generic action, you know. Maybe they'll surprise you. Maybe they'll make it like the first remake. But honestly, my gut feeling is they're going to make it more action-based, you know. Got to go fast. Got to go faster. Do sure, you feel that like the Resident Evil games should die out now? I think so too. I want the series to just done with the series and do new horror ideas with newer franchises. But I mean, Evil, it's time to go. If, um, if Resident Evil um, Seven is the last one, then hopefully Capcom will come up with new ideas for new survival horror games. I mean, they did one hell of a job with The Evil Within. Now, that game right there was spectacular. Yeah, that's that was with the original uh, Resident <laughs> Evil creator, Shinji Mikami, I think? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I've actually heard quite a lot about that game. I haven't played it myself yet, but... I mean, I heard that game pretty excellent. I mean, I'm going to buy that game also. So I can add that to my collection. Well, I think I think with Resident Evil, I think they should kill the I think they should kill the franchise now. I mean, because how many games have they actually made of the franchise? They will. Um, now I think Resident Evil Seven might actually be the last Resident Evil game. Something tells me that RE Seven might probably um, be the last one if they decide to do it. So, I mean, because in light, in light of the last film, well, the last film that they're doing with Resident Evil, which is coming out next year, I think it would be time for them to sort of, like, put the franchise to rest because they have been, they've been going strong for a couple of years, but they've kind of lost their way a bit too much. And I think trying to bring it back now, I yeah. think they will get the same glory as it did when it first came out. Yeah. But see, I think... Um, now, Paul W.S. Anderson, he did say that the next Resident Evil film is going to be the last. Yeah. <laughs> they did say that. Well, he, they, they keep saying that, but then they keep bringing these films back. I thought after the third or the fourth film, that was going to be it. But then it's like, <laughs> nope. She wakes up in the Matrix machine, and she imagined every single event that happened for the last three, four films. See, so, with that I'm not even fine with that film. Like, I know people down it, but the, I thought the first film was spot on. I have major gripes with the Resident Evil movies, including the first one. The first one, I thought, was, it, it stunk. There was no blood, hardly any blood or flesh eating. The, a standard episode of The Walking Dead has far more blood, guts, and gore than the Resident Evil movies. It's supposed to be a rated 18 plus rated R film. It totally mm -hmm. didn't capture the, the, the themes of the games. Mm -hmm. It didn't feel like the games at all. There was none of that horror. Like, here, here's an example. You go back to that first movie when they're in the hive, right? One of the 
army soldier dudes is going by an elevator. He presses it, and there's all these zombies come out. And yeah. then it switches back to his view pointing upward, like, like he's holding a camera upward. And all you see is the zombies opening and closing their mouths. You don't see them tearing any flesh. You don't see anything like that. And then it just goes to black, and it's stupid. That yeah, whole thing was like that. Even the second one, I think you see one bite, but you don't see any blood. It's all like white, like saliva, ravey foam on their yeah. arm. And then the lady's like, it's too late. And then she jumps off the roof. And then the third one finally has some blood in it, or her head's getting sliced off or something. But it was no, just... I don't want to fuck with the third, the third film. They kind of messed that up. That, oh, yeah, okay, okay, yeah. Oh, don't worry, I got complaints for that, too. Uh, they turned Resident Evil into fucking X-Men. The lady <laughs> has superpowers where she can disable electronics in space. Yeah, I know. At the end of the first one, she killed, a, she killed a security guard who was watching her on a camera from the security room just by using her mind and made his eyes and nose bleed, and he died. Do you I hate you, those movies. Do you feel I, that I yes. hate Ilya Jehovah's. She is... P.W.S. Anderson's wife. That is the only reason why she's so powerful and has such a big role in the film. Because she obviously was giving him some services, and he's like, "Oh, I'm gonna give you this and this, and you can do this in the movie." I don't know. Fuck P.W.S. Anderson. Fuck these movies. They're a disgrace to the franchise. The games are better. Even the games have gone down the wrong path. I don't know. I hate those movies. Sorry. Do you think they jumped with? They jumped the gun with the third film. Well, yeah. I mean, they did jump the gun with the third film. Now, I think with the fourth film, um, Afterlife and Retribution, and Retribution was pretty good. And uh, Afterlife, yeah. they did better with it. They did better. Um, I say with Wesker, Wesker, I think they got um the character spot on there. Yeah, I think they got the right actor to play him, but um. Sure. My, yeah. only, my only gripe with that yeah. is if you look at the games with Wesker, when he's when he's actually full in like uh, T virus mode, yeah, he's a lot fast. He can move extremely fast. You know what I mean? They uh -huh. don't, they only really like um, showed that in the film one bit. I think he should have been in the film a lot longer and actually. Um, was should have had more scenes to uh, like display his power a bit more. <laughs> yeah. yeah, true. But you know, do you think Resident Evil Seven will go back to survivor horror or will it continue the Michael Bay Michael Bay action flick style of uh, six? And five? If it if it wants to survive and they want to carry on the franchise, then they need to go back to basics. Yeah, they, they need to go back to, need to take the game back, back to its roots. The original. Go back to its roots. Yeah. They really need to take that game back to its roots because I remember playing the first Resident Evil game and all that scared the living crap out of me when I first played it, you know what I mean? But it had that creepiness, that dark like um atmosphere, atmosphere. to it. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, it did have the later I ones don't have that. No. Uh, four, 4 was not wholly bad. It did have some horror to it. It did have some of the atmosphere, but it also added the action. And 5 went way off the deep end and went balls to the wall, action, explosions. I didn't feel scared, not once. 6 was... Yeah, they kind, of, they kind of took the, the, uh, was it the G virus, wasn't it? I think it was in the, in the uh, fifth, fifth one, was it? <laughs> G virus. Well, it's not a G virus. That was in Resident Evil. Well, the Ebola. No, it was the Ebola virus. Yeah, yeah. And um, I think in part six, now Sherry, she did have the G virus inside of her body, though. Yeah. But she didn't mutate into a creature like her dad, though. She was kind of like Alice from um, the movie. Yeah. Uh, I mean, some of well, people were griping about um, w about the character Alice, but what they didn't understand is that the film, if you look at the film as a whole, all through, through all, all well, all three of them, it's like Alice uh, looking through the through the glass. Mm -hmm. Alice in Wonderland. 
You know, yeah. those movies would get a better review from me if they didn't have any of the Reason, Resident Evil names to them. No. Attached, just change some things, names of people, organizations, you know, and make it a bit different, then it would have gotten better reviews, I think, all around. But when you carry that name, that Resident Evil name, it comes with an expectation. It comes with an expectation of a horrifying atmosphere of, you know, that tension, that lack of ammunition, that not being able to run and gun and fight for everything, of having to having to run, having to hide. It it has an expectation of gore. You have to have gore. You have to have like any zombie movie, not even Resident Evil, just any zombie movie period, you have to have flesh eating and people getting torn apart. That's yeah. what you go to see. And the fact that those first two films didn't have that was a major like I, I don't care about this franchise, film franchise. Well I could see I could see what the director was doing with them. Because he was going he was trying to make um, it's like an Alice in Wonderland. Obviously you got the the character Alice, right? Yeah. Um, if you notice the subtle hints in the film, the Red Queen and the White Queen, both Alice in Wonderland characters, they've tried to he tried to like mix an Alice in Wonderland horror into the Resident Evil, and I don't think it's worked out quite well as he thought he might have done. He he should have his own idea. He should have not copied his franchise, run with his own franchise, and I think he would have done a better job. Yeah. Was the um well, uh, to be honest, I think Paul W. S. Anderson could have came up with his own original ideas. Now, if you um think about it, now George A. Romero's Resident Evil script wasn't half bad. No, it wasn't half bad. But you know, the, the only thing where George A. Romero's um script had messed up was. Having Chris Redfield and Jill Valentine as lovers. They wasn't lovers, they was best friends. No, they were brother and sister. Yeah. They wasn't brother and sister, they was just best friends that actually worked together. Oh, Jill Valentine. Yeah. Yeah, no, that yeah, Claire Redfield and uh they were kind of brothers, but that's another thing though, this is like with the films, it's like, where the hell did, um, I don't know, oh, well, Claire, well, you see what uh, Jill Valentine became in the films, but you don't really see her much in the games. That's what I don't understand, because they introduced her in a couple of games, but then she kind of disappeared from the franchise. Listen, man, they did have Jill Valentine in the first one. They didn't have her in the second one. She was in the third one, Nemesis. They, um... They had her in the fifth one, and then, um, you know, she was not in Resident Evil 6. No. So, now, Barry, on the other hand, he was in Resident Evil um, 1 and 3, and then you see him in Resident Evil Revelations 2. So, basically, Barry Burton has been absent from the Resident Evil games, like, for the past decade of years also. Hmm. I mean, Nemesis, the third game was good. Yeah. That was my favorite. I like that with Nemesis even yeah. better than 2. Because that, that thing, when I played this back in the day, that scared the shit out of me. This thing, you couldn't kill it. You you take it down. It would get up later, and it would chase you throughout the game. You'd just walk in in that police station, and all of a sudden, window crashes. The thing comes in and charges at you. You only got a pistol with like so much ammo, and it's like, oh, shit, i got to run. And you run. That love that game. The atmosphere it's that when, created everything. It was brilliant to me. It's when you hear that. It's when you hear that that, that thing in it. Stars like that. You know what I mean? You think shit. Run. You know what I mean? You got, got literally bolt. If you haven't got a rocket launcher, you got literally bolt because you got a little pistol. That thing's coming at you. <laughs> I think that the Nemesis theme was a little bit more scarier. <laughs> The musical um, score for um, Nemesis, like, yeah, <laughs> that was just more scarier, right there. But it's just it's, well, to be quite honest, so having that tyrant though in in Resident Evil Three, Nemesis, was, yeah, um, quite scary. You know what I mean? 
Oh yeah, yeah now the Nemesis Oh my god, yes. It was scary. Mm. It was scary. Yeah, what other topics we got the day anyway, so Yeah. Wade, but, uh, Wade wants to talk I, about the uh the Halo game, I think. Well, um basically we already talked about the um Halo games and whatnot, but now Uncharted Collections uh, now the Uncharted um game that's supposed to be coming out the uh, Uncharted Bundle that's supposed to be coming out um, art, um October Well yeah, right there I might probably get the um Uncharted game and uh, for um a Thieves Den which comes out in twenty sixteen I'm also get that. Yeah. So hey guys, I'm gonna have to a bow out of this uh, a little early. I gotta, I gotta go take care of some business. Yeah, right. Okay. I think we already covered like um, a lot of topics anyway. But... Well, it was nice being on here, and uh, I look forward to the next edition. We'll have things a bit more planned out better. Yeah. 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 You guys have a good one, Jerry, Terrence. Uh -huh. All right. Okay. All right. All right, Jag and Scorpion, we um we covered um a lot of topics on this podcast, so hopefully in the next podcast we can you know like do some more. Yeah, we're trying to get a bit more um topics in. Yeah. All right, guys, this has been the SSG podcast. If you enjoyed the podcast, um, please like the video, comment, or subscribe to. Us. Secret Society of Gamers YouTube channel. All right. We can only say peace out. Yeah, Scorpion, peace out. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man.